Hello Bronco Sport owners. It is Brad here at Aid Trailer, and today we're taking a look at the draw tight trailer hitch on a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. Adding a trailer hitch to your Bronco Sport is really gonna open up what you can do with it, whether it be hauling accessories or maybe even a small trailer. Now, this one in particular is very nice looking in the fact that the cross tube is hidden behind the rear bumper and really the business end is the only part hanging out so it looks great and it's got a nice black powder coat finish on its steel construction so not only is it strong because of being steel but it also has a strong coating to make it look good for a long time and prevent rust and corrosion from building up Looking at some of the features of the hitch, first thing you'll notice is it is a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is gonna be great. That's a pretty standard size for most accessories, so you're gonna be able to hook up pretty easily. You also have a 5 8 standard hitch pin hole, and that way you can put your hitch pin through to keep your accessories in place. Now, this is required for any accessories that you put in, and some accessories come with them, but if you don't have a hitch pin, we do have those here at eTrailer. And if you want a locking version, we also have those as well to keep your valuables safe. Other features are going to be a rolled steel safety chain loop, and it's nice and open, and that's gonna allow you to put larger clevis style hooks or your standard hook. This is changing the utility of your vehicle and allowing you to do a lot more, including towing a small trailer. So something that's important to note is the weight ratings on the hitch, which gross trailer weight is gonna be 3,500 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. So the force kind of pulling on here. Now you also have the tongue weight to consider as well, which is gonna be 525 pounds. And that's gonna be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So that's gonna, any accessories that are freestanding off of the hitch, that's about how much weight you can put on there. Now it's important to check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle's capable of towing. And you're gonna to wanna to compare that with the hitch numbers. Between the two of those, take the lower one just so you're safe. A few important measurements that I'm gonna show you are going to be from the center of the hitch pin opening here to the furthest point on the rear fascia. And that's gonna put us right at about three inches. Now that's important to note for when you load your accessories in and where they sit they might put it pretty close to the rear fascia. So make sure you do some measuring on your accessories or take that in consideration when shopping for them. Another important measurement to note is gonna be from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, which puts us at about 15 inches. So that's a decent amount of ground clearance to where you shouldn't have too much issue making contact with the ground, but some of your accessories can hang down a little bit lower and when you go up an incline, that can actually get close to the ground. So take that in consideration when loading up your accessories. Overall, it looks really great, and the installation process isn't too terrible. It does rate it at a pretty high installation difficulty, but I'm here to walk you through that. So step by step, we'll get it installed and you'll be using your hitch in no time. So for the install of this hitch, we are going to need to remove the rear fascia. And the first step is actually removing the tail lights because to get the rear fascia off, there's a few bolts. So to begin the process, I suggest having a plastic trim panel removal tool, and this is gonna make it easier to remove some of this plastic without scratching or marring it. If you don't have one, uh, we do have these here at eTrailer. You can also find them at a local auto parts store to get the job done. So this is gonna be pretty easy right here. We're simply gonna kind of pry this plastic out. And then once you get a gap on the bottom, you should be able to get your finger down here. And there are some clips, so just be careful. Don't pry too hard, but it should pull kind of out. And once you get one, you can kind of work up to the next. And then this section comes out. Now set this aside, because we'll need to uh, install it later. Now you're gonna find there's two 10 millimeter little nuts here so we'll go ahead and remove those and all the hardware that we're removing you're going to want to keep in a safe spot because we're going to be using them later i've had a lot of jobs where i go to finish it up and i'm searching for hard for hardware for a long time so best step stay organized from the get-go and we'll get through this pretty quickly I actually use an old muffin tin that I've put magnets on the bottom, and that way I can kind of separate each of my hardware. I also have my new hardware waiting to install for the hitch, so this helps me stay organized. So now we're gonna remove the rear tail light. Now this should take a little bit of wiggling, and if you have that plastic 
trim panel removal tool, you can actually put it between the tail light and the paint and just kind of twist a little bit to loosen that up. And you're gonna notice the gap will get bigger and then it'll pop out. Now don't pull too hard because you do have the plug for your actual tail light itself. So we're gonna to wanna to remove that by pushing that tab down, sliding that off. So now you can set your tail light aside and until we need to install it later. I'm also gonna repeat this same process on the passenger side of the vehicle. So now on the bottom part of our rear fascia, you're gonna see there's gonna be four seven millimeter screws here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. You're not gonna see two more seven millimeter screws here on each side of the vehicle. So go ahead and remove those. On the rear fascia in the rear wheel well, you're gonna see these plastic push pins and there's a total of five of them. So I'm going to use a trim panel removal tool that's metal like this. This makes it pretty easy. If you don't have one, we do have these here at e-trailer, but you can also use a flathead screwdriver and it should work all the same. So simply pry under that and get these popped out. It's proving to be a little tighter. There we go. You're gonna repeat this on the other side of the vehicle for a total of 10 clips. Now back up top, you're gonna to see these two plastic push pins underneath where your taillight was. You're gonna go ahead and you can use your flathead or your trim panel removal tool and just pop these up, maybe. There we go. And pull those out and repeat the same process on the driver's side. We're gonna be removing an eight millimeter bolt that's roughly about right here. And to access that, you're actually going to take your inner fender liner, and I always kind of grab it from the bottom, work my way up. And now your plastic fender well here is gonna to need to pop out. So very carefully, there are plastic clips here. You're gonna to wanna to just pry up on it. And just take your time. And work your way up. Now there are white plastic clips up here and make sure if they do pop off that you hold on to those. Now it is gonna get a little tricky to pop these. Now just kind of stay pressure on it and you can pry. And really you only need to get this last one here to access that screw. So again, take your time. You're gonna see where it clips in. Uh, that white plastic clip actually slides in there. It takes a little bit to get out. Yeah, a little tip, this white plastic is what actually needs to slide off of this. So if you're having trouble getting that clip to pop out, you can push on the edge of that white clip and you'll be able to slide that out. So I finally got it to pop off and that white clip actually slipped out of here. So when we put this back on, we'll make sure to slide that back in. So you don't wanna put your over fender here out too far cause you can actually create crease marks. So pry it just enough to where you can access this with your eight millimeter. And I believe a ratchet with a small socket is gonna be your best option. Once you remove your screw, you can now go on the passenger side and repeat the same process. So we're getting ready to get this rear fascia off. So if you have a friend nearby, you might wanna go grab them and give them a heads up. And maybe while you're waiting for them, I'm going to actually put a piece of tape along this edge. And that's gonna be nice for when we reinstall. You don't have body panels rubbing against each other or hitting plastic clips, scratching your paint. So go ahead and just run maybe some painter's tape right at the seam there. Anywhere where the friction might occur when reinstalling. So now we're gonna be removing the rear fascia. You're gonna to wanna to have an extra set of hands so it doesn't fall over. 
You also wanna set up something to put your rear fascia on, that way it doesn't get scratched while you're working on your hitch. So the trick is kinda of work from the outside in, and you don't wanna to pull too hard on the rear fascia because it's very possible there's connectors still attached. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you disconnect those before pulling the entire fascia off. You can see there's a little plastic nub here. You just lift that up and that should unhinge there. And again, just work your way in towards the middle. If you do get hung up in the middle with these clips, a plastic trim removal tool is going to probably help pry those open. Now with all of our clips removed, slowly pull it back and you will see there is some wiring connected. So with this plug, we're gonna remove this so we can completely remove the fascia. Just push on the bottom of that clip and that will unclip. So now we're going to remove our rear fascia support and this whole plastic structure. And there's gonna be six eight millimeter bolts along the structure. So go ahead and remove those. With our screws removed, this is still in place. There's this clip in the center here, so we're gonna go ahead and pop that off. Next, we're going to remove our impact bar, and we're gonna have 15 millimeter uh, nuts here that we're gonna go ahead and remove. Now, you're gonna wanna keep this hardware because we'll be using it for the installation of the hitch. So you're gonna have four nuts that are on studs on the front side and on the back here where these are welded in, you're also gonna have nuts there. So a total of eight for the entire impact bar. When you get to your last few nuts on the back side, you're gonna to wanna to actually support the rear impact bar. Now it is on studs, so it shouldn't fall as long as you keep a little bit of pressure on there, but you don't want this dropping on your feet. Okay, so that's our last one. And so our hitch is actually going to replace this impact bar, so you can set this aside and either get rid of it or you can store it somewhere for later use if you wanna reinstall before shelling a vehicle. But for now, we don't need this. So now you're ready to put the hitch in place. And so we're gonna place it on the studs. And you're gonna take that hardware that you just removed and loosely thread these on, and that way it doesn't fall. So now you're gonna take the hardware that comes with the hitch and you have a conical tooth washer and this is gonna face against that metal back there. So feed it with those teeth facing towards the actual threads. So now you can feed these through here and using your existing hardware that we removed, you can tighten that up on there. We don't need to go crazy on any of these because we're gonna go back and tighten them down and then also use a torque wrench to get our proper specs. So as long as it's in place, that's what we're looking for. So go ahead with your ratchet and your 15 millimeter socket and you can tighten these down. Uh, you don't really have to crank these down. Like I said, we're gonna use our torque wrench to get the proper spec, but this is gonna save you a lot of ratcheting with a torque wrench. Now, while tightening these down, you might've noticed that that bolt is kind of moving around. So you're gonna want to, when torquing these down, use a 17 millimeter wrench, and that way it's not gonna spin around while trying to tighten it. Now, a torque wrench is gonna get you the proper specifications on these, and so that's gonna make sure that there's not too much stress on the hardware, but also it's also gonna be tight enough to hold it in place. So if you don't have a torque wrench, we sell these here at eTrailer. You can also generally rent them at an auto parts store but it's very important to make sure you have the proper specs. So just follow your instructions for those numbers and go ahead and tighten those down.
You're gonna repeat that same process on the rest of the bolts and on the driver's side. So now we're going to be trimming out the bottom part of our rear fascia, and this is just going to open this up for that receiver hitch to be here. So I've marked it off with tape per the instructions, and this should get us pretty close. There's a few different ways you can cut it. You can use snips here. You can also use a rotary tool or an angle grinder, something along those lines. But before getting too crazy, just know there is electrical here. So be careful with that. You don't want to zip too far and cut that. I'm going to go ahead and use these snips. Now, once you have that removed, I'm gonna go back with a file and just kind of get these edges nice and clean before installing. So the hitch is officially installed. Really all that's left is to put everything back together, which is gonna be the reverse order that we took it off. So you have your fascia support, put that back on. And then when you're putting your rear fascia on itself, just make sure that you are plugging that plug back in and then from there, just take your time with your plastic clips and it all should go back together perfectly and you'll be ready to use your hitch. So with our rear fascia and taillights all reinstalled, we are ready to use our hitch. So hopefully this installation helped you get through it step by step and make your hitch install go seamlessly. And that was a look and installation of the draw tight trailer hitch receiver on a 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. Thanks for watching.